Hey everybody, welcome to the December Supper Club. As you know, um, we're doing a series, our, our theme this year is interreligious dialogues with uh, neighbors in Buddhism, Hinduism, we're gonna do Judaism, uh, Native American, and, is, and Islam, of course. Um, and so we're starting this month, our first one, with Buddhism. And we have the Reverend Diana Thompson. Um, Diana is the minister at the Tri-State Denver Buddhist Temple. Um, Diana, thank you for being here. And um, how long have you been here at, at the temple? Um, as a minister, 10 yeah. years. Okay. As a member of this tradition, I've been there since I was about six or seven years old. Oh, wow. So you, yeah. you've grown up at this, mm -hmm. in this temple. Oh, yes. wow. Oh, that's neat. Yes. Um, and then how, how big is it? How many people attend? Um, you know? Let's see. Attendance-wise, we see maybe... Uh, 90 or so folk uh, for the family service, and it okay. seems to thin out. I think the parents go shopping or go chat or whatever when the kids are in their Sunday school classes. Mm -hmm. So usually the adult services have maybe 20 to 30 people. But so once a week? Do you, do you once know? a week on Sunday mornings, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Similar yeah. to, yeah. Hmm. So your parents and our parents are all probably hanging out together. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Actually, and is, my parents like to sit and watch while I'm doing yeah. stuff. What do you do in a, in a service? Is it similar? Is it things we would recognize? Or um, I mean, I believe there, so. Other than, like, I mean, we have liturgy things. So we do chanting okay. um, to begin the service. And then we have particular readings that we'll do um, all together every week, and then one of the ministers will give a talk. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's pretty, okay. yeah. So you'll prepare a talk, do you call it a, mm -hmm. a Dharma talk? Or yes. do you call it something like that yes. that you yeah. share? So there's just some chanting, so similar singing. Do you, mm -hmm. is there meditation or prayer kind of time? Is there time No, no. no. Okay. So our tradition is not a specific, like meditative in the sense that we sit and have quiet time or whatever. Uh -huh. That sounded really flippant and I apologize. <laughs> it's not no. to my other Buddhist brothers and sisters. Sure. I'm not saying But that's that not part of your tradition. No, no. And it's um, actually uh, traditionally meditation was for monks and nuns and not for lay people it. because it had like a different goal. Okay. So, but as we've seen over time, that's what a lot of people um, Hmm. are sort of bringing back into their practice hmm. for lay people's traditions. So. And what tradition is it? We didn't, I should have asked. Yeah, what there's is so it? many different strains yeah. of Buddhism. Yeah, so I'm with uh, Jodo Shinshu, which is a Japanese form of Pure Land Buddhism and, okay. and under the larger Mahayana umbrella of Buddhist tradition. Hmm. Okay, okay, all right. And Diana, did you have to go to seminary and what kind of preparation for yeah. being a minister? And, your tradition. Yeah, so we have um, a seminary school in Berkeley, California. Uh, we also have the bigger one where our mother temple is in Kyoto, Japan. Um, mm. My Japanese is terrible, <laughs> and my daughter was three when I went to seminary, so I chose Berkeley, um, and it's a Master of Arts program, okay. but um, yeah, we focus specifically on our tradition for the most part, and then we have two ordinations that we go through, and both of those we do in Japan at the training center there. Okay. How many uh, temples in that tradition are there? Is there... Um, in Japan, there are several thousand. Okay. Okay. Uh, here in the United States, I think we have 60, 60 or 65 mm -hmm. temples throughout the United States, mostly okay. on the West Coast. Okay. but. And, you, yeah. and this is Tri-State Denver. So are you covering a Tri-State region? What, how um, much do you we uh, serve? We used to, and actually the ministers here in Colorado used to cover far more than that. So it kind of all of the surrounding states around Colorado. Mm. But when I first started, we did travel um, every other month or so to Nebraska and New Mexico. Mm. But... Those were much older groups, and a lot of them have since passed away. So mm -hmm. we just mm -hmm. covered the state of Colorado now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Diana, what are the essentials then of Buddhism and from your tradition? Mm -hmm. So what would you say are the essentials? 
The essentials. So um, I guess largely what we're trying to do is um, we say see life just as it is. Mm -hmm. So some of the things that we focus on mainly, the Buddha said that one of our, some of our huge causes of, um, it comes out suffering, but that always sounds like such a harsh term, but mm -hmm. the cause of like our dis-ease or discomfort with mm -hmm. life are um, the idea that um, things are always changing, nothing mm -hmm. will stay the same, nothing will last forever, um, and that's, that's a difficult one for us, mm -hmm. right? Because, sure. yeah, and again, it runs the gamut. So you have like change where you wanted to wear a pair of pants in the morning and they're in the laundry. So like <laughs> kind of bums you out, but doesn't completely ruin your life. And then of course, you know, mm -hmm. the death of a loved one way on the other side of mm -hmm. the spectrum. So mm -hmm. just our inability to kind of flow with change. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And also the idea of interconnectedness. So mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. is linked in like this chain of being mm -hmm. so that being aware of your action and trying to make it so that you're not causing other people discomfort or harm or mm -hmm. and just kind of knowing that even if it's not directly you're still having an impact on things so to be kind of mindful of speech mm -hmm. and action and things mm -hmm. like that so those would kind of be the main things that we all coalesce around is there a is there, are you working toward you know in traditional from the outside, mm -hmm. the, the idea of enlightenment or working toward a state of being that's, that's how, how do you think about enlightenment, I guess? Or the, um, so for my in tradition, um, impossible, because mm -hmm. my tradition focuses on people who are not monks and nuns, who have not um, taken themselves out of regular life. So mm -hmm. human life comes with attachment up until the end. So mm -hmm. we've got kids, we're going to be real attached to them to the end of mm -hmm. our lives, right? Mm -hmm. So right. to say that you can rid yourself of all attachment mm -hmm. um, unless okay. that is your specific goal, mm -hmm. but that also would require you removing yourself mm -hmm. and putting yourself in a community that is specifically focused on enlightenment and Interesting. things okay. like that. So it's that. not necessarily so the goal of all, of all Buddhists. To right. Know, it's, it's more of, right. So are you, is it more about becoming more loving? And, it's, um, um, it's or I, I just, don't know, about becoming more realistic, yeah, I guess. Again, mm -hmm. kind of seeing life as it is. So, uh, mm. you know, compassion also on a huge spectrum. So everybody mm. thinks that that is, I'm going to be kind and gentle all of the time. Mm. Again, just to throw out the parenting example, I, I've gotten real loud when my daughter is in danger or doing mm. something that could cause her harm or something. And that can be compassion too. Telling somebody they're being a jerk when they're being a jerk to somebody, that's an act of compassion too. So it's just about being sort of realistic about what life is that yeah. things happen and it does garner compassion right mm -hmm, that we're sure. all bumbling around doing the very best we can mm -hmm. so i try to be more understanding of you as a result but mm -hmm. also more understanding of myself that like okay i tried to do a thing and okay maybe it didn't go right but that's part of being a human being it's real mm -hmm. messy yeah. all of the time so, so this really just, embracing uh messiness complexity mm -hmm. who we are life yeah. is and so there's this self gentleness is there a process of we, what we call confession and mm. assurance of pardon you know, is this part of our liturgy mm -hmm. is there a, kind of a ritual or liturgy of letting go of of when you di uh, self disappointment or yeah not no there's no real ritual behind it at all just kind of yeah trying to trying to just better understand it mm -hmm. that you know mm -hmm. it's it's okay and things are going to come up and mm -hmm. that's okay and you know just being open to mm -hmm. talking to other people about it maybe or whatever you mm -hmm. know because again we don't have any hard and fast rules about this is yeah. going to work for everybody because mm. not everything is for everybody. So, mm. interesting. How do you think about God, and and do you ever use that language, or how do you think about it from like a Buddhist divine perspective? Or the yeah, the something. holy, or is, is there language around that? Or uh, it's, 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 yeah, that's a 
complicated one, I guess. Yeah. So there's no specific tradition of saying that there is one specific deity. I mean, yeah. there is the universe, whatever that means to you mm -hmm. in particular. And um, but. Buddhist traditions are largely colored by uh, cultural traditions mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there was a lot of blending. Buddhism was kind of a yeah. religious tofu as it moved through. It just hopped in a place and absorbed all the local flavor. Yeah. So mm -hmm. there are a lot of like understandings of celestial Buddhas and their celestial Buddha realms yeah. and um, there are bodhisattvas who are not full Buddhas that in mm. some Buddhist traditions they petition or almost like a saint kind mm -hmm. of tradition. Um, so it, yeah, so there's not an all pervasive understanding of like God or deity, but mm -hmm. depending on traditions, there's a lot of fluidity within that kind of so faith There's a sense of other realms, and, right? Mm -hmm. There's that kind of sense and, and that we might go to our soul, would you talk in terms of soul, first of all? I mean, it's interesting how the language is, I get caught Yeah, up, like, I was going to say, and it assume. does, it gets so Limiting. complicated with yeah. translations. Right, yes. right. Like yes. that. Do you, use that, you don't use the word soul. Uh, not words. really, no. Yeah. Yeah. No, but who you are, your so. essence, mm -hmm. could continue yeah, past this lifetime. Potentially, yeah. yeah, I mean, for the, the standard Buddhist answer would be that no, we just blink out of existence and that's, that's actually the ultimate nirvana, like mm -hmm. the moment of enlightenment or nirvana, because then you have nothing. You are mm -hmm. no longer in existence, but there are Buddhist traditions that have an understanding of some essential something that's kind of transmigrating mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. lifetimes. Yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah, again, I would say largely it's more of an understanding of you have passed on, but there is something. So like whatever you put into the world while you were alive, that continues on. Okay. And okay. you know, mm -hmm. after you've died, everybody's got specific memories of mm -hmm. you. And mm -hmm. so you, because of you, you became part of that person and right. part of their right. general fabric. So right. there's like it a lingers. continuance, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. yeah. And hopefully it was a good one. Although, <laughs> I've officiated enough funerals, everybody was a good one. So <laughs> it's nobody's a bad person after At they least die, on that apparently. Day. Yes, yeah. exactly. So, so when we hear someone say, I consider myself a Buddhist, mm -hmm. what does that mean then? What, what does that mean when someone says, I, or I, I think of myself as a Buddhist? Yeah, that kind of depends again on the person mm. so we talk about all um there are a lot of like here in the united states for instance a lot of traditions that came over with specific groups of immigrants and um, a lot of time there are some cultural traditions that go along with that and so they are buddhist in that tradition okay um there's a scholar who brought up something uh, called nightstand Buddhist. So mm -hmm. you have like your little books on meditation right. or books written by the Dalai Lama or whatever that are on your nightstand and yeah. you maybe pull a practice out of there that you right. like. So there's mm -hmm. actually nothing specific that mm -hmm. would say like, because you do this, you are a Buddhist. Right. So, right. Does yeah. it tend to be more practice based versus belief? based then? Um, boy, that kind of depends too. So we do have practice of chanting, but not everybody does that all the time, you know, except yeah, for yeah. maybe Sunday mornings okay. and um, reciting the name of the Buddha that's enshrined at our temple mm -hmm. as a pretty common practice for our tradition. But again, not not something that's specifically focused on. Mm -hmm. I think um, a lot of people come to maybe hear the talks more so than anything. Okay. But mm -hmm. again, with other Buddhists, um, they may focus more on like meditative practices mm -hmm. or yeah. things that they've incorporated regularly. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of the, uh, for lack of a better term, like the Western Buddhists, the Buddhists that, mm -hmm. uh, 
began their practice here in the United States and created it based on other yeah. um, more traditional practices tend to want to say it's more of a philosophy and not necessarily a religion, religion. Mm. but mm. you know if you go to one of the temples in the area that was brought over with a specific immigrant group you would definitely say it tends more towards religious practice because right. we do have like very specific rituals right. and ways you that do. we do things. And right, right. Yeah. Interesting. So, I yeah. was surprised when you said that your, at least your tradition doesn't focus on meditation much. Mm -hmm. I, I so associate Buddhism with meditation. So yes. It's, it's fascinating. Yes, to, and again yeah. that was a largely Western adaptation because, um, and obviously this is, you know, like not 100% sure. all of the time, but um, yeah, if you want to put easy categories, like there were the groups that came over as immigrant traditions, and then there was the groups, or there were the groups, excuse me, grammar, there were the groups that came up, um, and these are largely on the East Coast, uh, sort of Victorian salons, basically, mm -hmm. who were studying texts from the Orient. Mm -hmm. And so right. they were focusing more on um, what the texts said and right. not so much treating it as a religion, but as part of the philosophies that they were right. encountering all of a sudden. And right. so the. Right. The idea of meditation, again, it was so much more a monastic practice, yeah. and even then a very high-level monastic practice right. because yeah. on yeah. a base level, yeah. you have to get yourself together before you can start playing with the boxes in your head. Yeah. So, yeah, because you don't know what you're going to open up up there, <laughs> and you really need to. Wow. So, That's yeah, so it became more common when... Um, yeah, when basically rich white people got mm -hmm. involved and were looking into it, so. Okay. Well, yeah. then maybe one last question, because mm -hmm. I know we're, and there's so much I know. more. I, know. I would love, <laughs> would love to have you come and do a series. Oh, yeah, this would be oh, great. Sure. Well, I am curious about the textual piece, mm -hmm. because so many religions have a text, you yes. know, or we are people of the text. And mm -hmm. so is there a text, and when you're teaching, is it, from a text? Or? Mm. So we don't have a ubiquitous text. We have mm -hmm. a whole bunch of them. Okay. And uh, the, oh gosh, another scholar kind of referred to specifically Mahayana Buddhism as like um, the cult of the book. So there are so mm. many different texts that got mm. written over okay. time right. that we all tend to focus on either one text or a series of texts. Yep. Mm -hmm. So our tradition has um, three small texts that we use, and then the founder of our tradition did some writings. And so we use those as kind of the foundation okay. for when we do talks and okay. things like okay. that. But yeah. 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 Can we ask one more? <laughs> if you could change one thing about mm -hmm. your tradition, because we, you know, we, we, we have things you know that we'd like to change. If we, if we had our way, we'd say, well, I'd do Christianity a little differently mm -hmm. in this way. Mm -hmm. What would you, what would you change about? Oh gosh, you guys <laughs> sent me that one, and I was trying. Yeah. <laughs> Is that a hard one? Yeah. Anyway. Um, well, because there are just so many uh, little, things. little things. I know yeah. even within our tradition, there mm -hmm. are um, things that we go back and forth about. So we mm -hmm. do. Uh, we talk about a specific Buddha and this Buddha's pure land mm -hmm. and in sort of traditionally in Japan it's talked about in more of a very specific like this is absolutely a Buddha in an absolute space um, whereas over time like my understanding of it growing up is that as with a lot of these sorts of things in Buddhism it doesn't matter mm. so much. Mm -hmm. And so, um, mm. I don't know, just maybe returning to more of that idea. Because mm -hmm. again, like with all these different deities from different traditions that crop up in various Buddhisms and things like that, we, the idea of whether or not something absolutely exists is so inconsequential to us mm. ultimately. So mm. it's like if we could get, you know, less 
sort of hardcore orthodox, I yeah, guess, with certain things the way we talk about. Because as a minister, um, for instance, when I'm doing, when I'm talking to a family after somebody has died, I can just as easily say mom or auntie or whomever has gone to the Pure Land and that's where they are right now. And some other days I will say that, no, it's kind of, you know, it's just a representation of great wisdom and great compassion that are surrounding us all the time. And mm -hmm. so they've entered into the great wisdom, compassion, but mm -hmm. it honestly doesn't matter. And I 100% believe both things, you know? Yeah. So it's like the, my understanding of it was always this. And I think more and more people as the tradition, like even our colleagues who come work here from Japan are kind of getting mm. a little bit more easy with that. Mm. That like we don't dogmatic. It's yes, it's like, very hardcore. Yeah. And I'm sure, you know, same yep. with you guys. <laughs> like, yeah. Dogmatic <laughs> things that it's like, Definitely. come on, guys. <laughs> yeah, we don't really know yeah, some of these things. That's, that's mm. right. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, yeah. and really, we would love to have you to come and do a, a series of introduction yeah, to Buddhism no, for our be community. Great. It'd be that'd great. Be great. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. We have questions? some questions. Okay. Um, one of the questions I believe that we came <laughs> up with was: um, Is what surprised you in this conversation? What did you learn about Buddhism that maybe you had no idea about, or um, dispel some of the assumptions you've had about yeah. Buddhism? And then the other one we had talked about was um, just what were your ideas about Buddhism before this conversation? What, what have you learned or what was your impressions or, or misunderstandings that maybe this helped to, or, or to shift? Because I, I certainly learned some things that I, mm -hmm. I didn't know were true about um, at least. And, and as you were great about saying, you don't represent all of Buddhism. Yeah. You're, you're, you're representing your tradition, of course. Yeah. It's yeah. just like for us. You know, it's, it's a much bigger field. Christianity's, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, oh, this is great. I have a feeling yeah. that we're going to learn a lot about that in yeah. the next series right. that we assume we know religions, yeah. but uh, they're much more complicated and <laughs> diverse within their own religious yes. traditions. Yeah. 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 Diana, thank you. Thank you, you so much. Guys yeah. so much. Appreciate it. Have yeah. a good okay. evening, and uh, we will see you next month.